Hi everyone and Merry Christmas. I hope you all had a really wonderful Christmas day um, spent with your loved ones and uh, happy holidays to those of you that don't celebrate Christmas. Um, I had a really lovely day. I hosted a family party at my house for 16 people um, which is probably the biggest sit-down family dinner I've ever organized but uh, my husband did an amazing job and um, yeah everyone had a really great time so I hope you got to spend uh, some quality time with your loved ones and I hope you all got spoilt for Christmas. Um, I certainly did. I received some uh, lovely Christmas presents from some lovely stitching friends and um, a surprise stitching related present from my niece and a late Christmas present to myself which only arrived today. So. Um, Sit down, relax, enjoy yourselves, grab a coffee, I've got mine. This is going to be the last video for the year and as usual it's going to be a long one. So um, I'm going to show you my finishes and FFOs for December. I'm going to talk about or briefly talk about my year in review which was really surprising to me. Um, my projects and upcoming stitch alongs for 2016 which I'm really excited about really can't wait for those uh, briefly go into how I'm going to tackle those um, I've uh, also got a little bit of stash to show you my last couple of orders from 123 stitch for the year and uh, I think that's it I've got a list of notes next to me because there's a lot to go through so Let's get started. So I'm going to start off with the beautiful Christmas presents that I received, which were a total shock. Um, I had sent Claire a um, pin broidery Christmas card and she said my card was in the mail and uh, I didn't get a card. I got a beautiful, beautiful ornament. And those of you that know Claire, um, and those of you that don't, her name is Pyrex Stitches on YouTube and this is the beautiful ornament that she made for me for Christmas. Isn't it beautiful? It's in the shape of a Christmas tree with all the sewing bits and bobs attached. Merry Stitchmas, which is just absolutely perfect. She made this into an ornament herself. So proud of you Claire absolutely stunning I nearly cried um, this went straight on the Christmas tree I only have three handmade ornaments on the tree and two of them are ones that I've made myself so this took pride of place because it's just perfect and I thank you so much Claire it it really brightened my day which needed brightening so thank you again if anyone is interested um, the Design can be found in the Just Cross Stitch Christmas Ornaments 2013 edition on page 82. And the design is by, I do know it but I've forgotten, uh, Sue Hillis Designs, of course. Um, she comes up with some great designs and one that I've actually just started last night. So um, Claire has agreed to allow me to stitch this for her for next year as an ornament. So I can't wait, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm going to be starting early. I'm not leaving my Christmas stuff late like I did this year. But thank you once again, this is beautiful, beautiful work. Love it. I've got so much on my table here to show you, there's no room to put anything. Okay, next I have received a beautiful chart from a lady who wants to remain anonymous. She knows who she is and I know who she is. But I still want to show you the chart because it is beautiful. Uh, I've always been a lover of Stony Creek Collection. I have quite a few of their charts over the years. Uh, but I have very, very few snowman charts. I have, I believe, possibly two. So this will be number three. And this is called Snow Happens. And some of you have probably already seen this before, but I've never seen this particular chart. And I love snowmen. I really do. And there's the back. So I'd really like to pick one of these out to stitch next year. 
I'm not sure which one and I'm not going to decide yet because I change my mind a lot so um, I'll, I'll wait till it gets a little bit closer next year and I'll pick this one out so thank you so much anonymous you know who you are and thank you for the thought and it was a very beautiful thought and I really really appreciate it thank you and it was so lovely to have that to open I had it under my tree for a little while and um, I opened that on Christmas morning and it was beautiful so thank you And the next Christmas present I received was a big surprise. I wasn't expecting it at all. And this was from my niece. And my family don't buy me um, cross-stitch presents because I think it's because they don't really know what I have and what I need. Um, but my niece recently went to Japan. Lucky, lucky girl. And we were talking about babushka dolls and she had mentioned in a message that, oh, I just saw something, auntie, that you'll love. I have to go back and get it. And she wouldn't tell me what it was. So this is what she brought me back. And it's a pair of pot holders with beautiful deer on the front. And I'm going to put this nice and close. And it is actually a cross stitch image that has been printed on these pot holders. Now these are made by a company called uh, Zebra or Zebra. And they are distributed to Copenhagen. So they're made in Japan, which is beautiful. And the card actually matches, you look here, exactly the same. And there's the front and back. But the card is actually a photograph of the actual cross stitch design. And if you look carefully, you can see the cross stitches. How amazing is that? So I said to her, I love it so much, darling. I said, but there is no way I'm going to use it. She said, oh, no, please do, please. That's what they're for. No, no, because even if I wash them over time, they will get ruined. And I think it's just such a lovely, thoughtful gift. And from the, a place that I've never been and, um, you yeah, know, it'd be nice to go there one day. But if I don't, I have a gift from Japan. So that's really, really wonderful. So I don't think she watches my... Um, videos but in case you do Emily thank you so much again sweetheart it's a beautiful present thank you okay and the last present was a present to myself and where did I put it here it is um, unfortunately this didn't arrive before Christmas so I was a little bit sad um, because I really wanted to open this on Christmas morning but doesn't matter it arrived this morning so this was a big splurge, um, a very expensive splurge. I had said all year that I wanted to do a Chatelaine and I couldn't warrant the cost of the Chatelaine because with the, you know, Australian conversion, I'm always going on about the conversion, I know, but it really does suck sometimes. Um, so anyway, I had decided that the Chatelaine wasn't going to happen for the year and I've been watching um, Wendy, who's... Um, blog and Instagram I will link down below who's been stitching the gingerbread village series from the Victoria Sampler and I have been watching her blog um, very very closely because these particular cottages have been on my wish list forever and ever and ever and I thought well I didn't get the Chatelaine because it's a lot of money for one thing Whereas I could warrant the amount I spent on this because it's, in this particular case, it's three things. But they're things I can also use. So it's not just something beautiful to look at framed and on a wall, but it's something I can bring out every year. And um, in most cases, they're usable as well. So I'll show you what I'm going on about. And it is the Victoria Sampler Gingerbread Village series. So the first one is the Gingerbread Stitching House. Now, I really wanted the, the latest one that's come out. Um, actually, I think the quilt shop might be the latest. It's one before that is the Needlework House. Um, it's, up, it's called something like that. And the roof lifts off and it's a box that you can store things in. And I loved that. And I thought, well, I really want to do that. But I like to stitch things in the order that they were created. And I, I don't know, it's silly, but that's just the way I like to do things. So I thought, well, I'll reward myself. And I think the Needlework House is number seven in the series. So I have quite a few of these to do. Um, quite a lot of money to spend before I get to that one. But that will be a reward. 
And that's, that's the way I work, you know, I reward myself. So uh, this is number one, as I said, gingerbread stitching house. This house is so cute. Has a little, there's a little pin cushion in the roof. Sorry, in the chimney. And the roof actually lifts off and is a needle case inside. And there's also a chart for the pin cushion and the scissor keep. And I just think that is, it's the scissor fob. Scissor fob, the scissor keep. Sorry, I was looking at that. The scissor keep is on the back. Um, love it. Love it. Number two, so I got the three. A lot of expense, but I had to warrant the shipping. The Victoria Sampler page were having a sale. So I just took advantage of it and I thought, you know what? Hopefully I'll get the three done in the year. If not, then I'll carry on to the next year. So the second one is the tree, the Christmas tree, which is gorgeous. Comes with a pin cushion. This one is a surprise because it opens up and you can store the pin cushion inside along with another scissor keep. Isn't that adorable? I love that. And number three is the church. This one doesn't open and close or, or do anything. This one just looks pretty and it is really pretty. So along with these leaflets, which are great by the way, they are lovely glossy pages, really nice quality. Um, which I won't be marking, I will be photocopying. And the leaflets themselves are, are quite well priced, don't have any issues there. But I ordered the three packs. And if any of you have looked into the price of this series, these three packs, wow. Really, wow. Um, the gingerbread tree one alone was like $80 for a three pack. And that's, that's what you get in there. Okay, so there's a mixture of hand dyed, sorry, over dyed um, cottons and silks, as well as normal silks, uh, buttons, beads, all that sort of thing. Some metallics, but like $80. And that's US dollars, it's not Australian. So, very expensive. Um, so that's the one for the tree. And then there's the one for the house. So that's the pack there for the house. So these are in bundles and I know some of you are going, oh, I have to sort through that. So I'm gonna tell you something that I don't think I've told anyone. And you're gonna think I'm really weird. I actually enjoy sorting through the bundles. I do. I like to organize, I like to sort. And to be honest, I miss the kits where it's all just one big bundle and you have to sort through the colors. And right now you're all shaking your head going, oh my God, you are kidding. I hate doing that. So if anyone doesn't want to do it, send it to me. I'll sort it through for you. I like it. Um, and this is the third pack. This is the church. And you can see there, look at those little buttons, the snowflake buttons and the beads. Oh, I love it. So, and on the front it tells you, like for instance, it says bundle A, bundle B, bundle C. So they only have so many things in each bundle. So I think it's pretty easy to sort through. But again, I like doing that. So I'm a weirdo. Um, I also bought the Gingerbread Tree um, DVD, which has an explanation on how to put it together, which is in the book anyway. But I thought, you know, I'm buying all this. What does it hurt? I'm just going, I'm going to get it and... I've never really finished anything like this before. I, I just did two finishes this month that I had never done before. And I was quite proud of myself. So, you know, I need all the help I can get with these. And I also purchased the DMC number 12 pearl and the number 8 pearl. I didn't purchase the white silk packs because by this time I had already spent a bucket load and I needed to save a little bit of cost. So I'm just going to substitute that for DMC um, B5200 and whatever else. I'll, I'll figure it out as I go along. Sadly, I still have to buy material. So it's still another expense. Um, but I don't plan on starting these until my other cottages are finished. Um, I will be finishing a series of those in March. So again, this will be my reward to start three dimensional cottages. 
So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to finishing them off into shapes and bringing them out every Christmas. And I'm really looking forward to learning some new stitch techniques because there's some things in there that I've never done. There's hard anger and there's, there's all sorts. So it's going to be exciting and hopefully the instructions in the book will help get me through. Otherwise, I'll be on the lookout for some uh, stitch tutorials on YouTube. And I know there are a few out there, so looking forward to that. So that was my Christmas present to myself. Very extravagant, I know, um, but there was no Chatelaine for me this year. And yeah, that's how I justify that. I get three projects, um, probably for the price of one Chatelaine. So uh, looking forward to that. Let's move on, shall we? Uh, what I'm up to, finishes and FFOs in December. I have eight to nine, so let's just say eight. I have eight finishes and FFOs to show you for December. Uh, starting with my sister's Eiffel Tower. Um, you guys, pretty sure I showed you the finish. Yes, I showed you the finish last month. So I actually completely finished this off. I'm going to insert a picture here. I finished this off as a flat fold and I used the tutorial by the Twisted Stitcher and if none of you have checked out that site you really must go and check out her site. She has tutorials on ornaments, flat folds, um, cushions, oh look there's just too many I can't even think of them. Everything you need to know, all photographed step by step, it's awesome. And I, as I said, I did this flat fold for the first time ever. I'm so proud of how it turned out. My sister absolutely loved it. It made her cry because she went to Paris this year. It was her lifelong dream to go to Paris and that happened for her. And I said to her that she needed to have a memory of that that she could put out at Christmas and remember that that was the year that she went to Paris. So yeah, as I said, she loved it. Um, I loved stitching it. I'm going to do many, many more flat folds in future. I found that a very easy technique to do. And in fact, I think the cottages up above would look awesome as flat folds. And what a great way to store them. Hence, flat fold, they store flat. Um, if, if I had the nerve to stitch them all again, I would certainly do them as flat folds next time. But I'm not going to stitch them all again. Because that would just be crazy, wouldn't it? Maybe a few years down the track, I might stitch them all again. Who knows? Don't think I'll be getting rid of the charts anytime soon. So that was it for my sister. That was <clears throat> that uh, chart, by the way, was from craftideas.com and it was an online freebie. So I'll link that down below. And as normal, I, I put all the details to everything I mentioned down below. So just open up that description box and there should be all the details that you need there. Okay, next one is uh, a present I did for Teresa. I believe she has done a video showing you all. I haven't watched the video yet. I'm really behind in the videos and in the last week, well, since Christmas Eve, I have pretty much been staying off the internet as much as possible because I've been just distracting myself and trying to get some other stuff done that needed being done. So, um... I stitched a biscornu for the lovely Teresa. I sent out a couple of gifts this Christmas to some lovely stitches. I would have liked to have sent out hundreds more, but time just got away from me. I have to start much earlier next year. Um, so anyway, I stitched this biscornu for Teresa. Before it became a biscornu, I had stitched the letter T. I'm going to insert a picture here. Uh, this letter T came from the Antique Floral Alphabet chart by Leisure Arts. And I had stitched the letter T on Mushroom Even Weave and I loved how it looked. And I was trying to decide how I was going to finish it. And initially I was just going to finish it as a normal pincushion. And then when I realised that it was a rectangular shape, I sort of thought, oh, it's a bit funny shape for a pincushion. Usually pincushions are square. And then I thought, well, you know what? A biscognu would be nice and I know Teresa would really really like a biscognu and it might actually inspire her to make her own biscognu down the track. So that was my idea behind making a biscognu so that she could have it beside her and say hey you know what 
I want to make one of these for myself. So um, for anyone that hasn't made a biscornu before or for anyone that wants to know how to make a biscornu um, out of something that is not a square shape, this is an ideal thing that you can see. It is a rectangular shape. So how when you make a biscornu, it needs to be completely square. So same amount of stitches on each side as there is top and bottom. So it's exact square. So all I did was I counted out until I reached the same amount of stitches all the way around. And I can't remember how much it was, 50 something stitches, um, I think. I, I can't remember, because uh, I've thrown all that away. But once you've got your square, then the biscornu happens. And this doesn't quite look like it's the right shape in the photographs, but that's because I didn't put the button in the middle. Once you put the button in the middle and you, you sew it through to the bottom, it squashes it down and gives it that really, you know, that biscornu shape that we're all used to. But I didn't want to put the button there because I didn't want to disturb that letter T. I thought it might take it away from that. So um, hopefully you all still saw that it was still the shape of the biscornu. Anyway, I've gone on for that too long. Um, so, yes, that was a gift for Teresa Little Stitcher. So, hopefully, she enjoyed that. And then next, I made two Christmas cards, which I'm counting as one finish because they were so small. Um, it's not fair to count them as two finishes because what were they? Um, 1.75 inches by 1.75 inches. So, I counted them as one finish. They were a Christmas card each for the teacher, the crafty curator, and Teresa Little Stitcher. I'll insert pictures here. Uh, these pictures don't show the actual completed card, which I forgot to take photographs of. So these are just the finished stitch. Uh, this design was the Red Threads chart that I showed earlier in the year, and that's by Rosewood Manor. And I stitched these in red and gold, and I achieved that by stitching them with one strand of anchor red pearl, so that's equal to two strands of red thread, and one strand of petite treasure braid. And that tied in together, and it just gave that red sparkly Christmassy look. So that was something new for me, something fun to do, and um, I did... Letitia's first and I enjoyed it so much that I stitched another one for Teresa. So uh, again, hopefully they liked those in their present. Next finish and FFO is Gilligan's Island. If you remember me stitching this, I started this early in the year as a Father's Day present for my husband. Didn't get finished by Father's Day, but it got finished for his birthday. And ta-da, it's all done. I am so happy with how that turned out. I turned it into a cube, as you can see, a very basic cube. Blue on the back, red on the front. He's a guy, he doesn't want ribbons, he doesn't want bows, he doesn't want lace, just nice and simple. Didn't even put feet on it. You can see my pins down there. No feet on it, just basic. However, this wasn't going to be a cube, this was going to be put in a frame. And right up until the day of his birthday, I was still looking for a frame. But because of this shape, couldn't get it. I'd left it too late for the framing shop to make one. So I thought, right, I'll do a cube. Now what I've done is I haven't cut the fabric. All the fabric that, you know, I, I usually allow three inches all the way around, is still back there. Can't tell, can you? Can't see it. So should I decide down the track that I find the perfect frame and he says, I, I don't want it as a cube anymore, I want it as a frame, I can just unpin it and chuck it in a frame. That's what I love about this. I love the fact that it's portable. It, you can move it from room to room. You don't have to put holes in the wall to hang it. And if you decide down the track, I don't want it as a cube anymore, I want it in a frame, you can do it because you haven't cut anything, you haven't sewn anything. It's fantastic. So I really, really love this finish. It's, it's my favourite thing that I found this year, is the cube finishes. They're a lot of fun. So um, again, this design was by Amazing Cross Stitch on Etsy. If you haven't 
seen them and you like little people check them out they have all the tv characters all the all the popular characters really um anything you can imagine in little people and i love them i had to make a few changes to the skin colors because they didn't quite work out but um it's great great fun so that's that one and then we have my dad's ornament, which was stitched a day late because I was so focused on the day that I forgot to stitch it. Naughty, naughty me. So this is Christmas Cheer by Country Cottage Needleworks and my first ever felt ornament. I love it. So um, on the Country Cottage Needleworks chart, they have three layers of felt. I just did two. I thought the three was a little bit thick. It's not perfect because I didn't have a rot rotary tool with the wave cutter blade. My rotary tool is garbage. Uh, this is mine. Just plain round and it takes me four turns to cut through one piece of cotton fabric. It's garbage. So I have since found a rotary tool cutter a much better brand on ebay and i've already got the wave blades on this table here somewhere for it so i may even take all this off because i think i can and replace it if not for next time i've got it but this was really easy to finish really really easy it's the uh, design is stuck on mat board with some batting in between and then just a couple of layers of felt a little hanger a little bow piece of cake this tutorial uh, was also from the twisted stitcher so thank you vonnie i don't think you watch my videos but just in case thank you again for your awesome tutorials um, i wouldn't be able to do these if it wasn't for you uh, this design I change up a little bit instead of the French knots on the presents and the buttons on the elves I put in beads and they're not quite sitting right. Um, anyway, and I did the little decorative button on there. I don't think I changed anything else. No, that's it. So that's my second dad's Christmas ornament that I've ever made. And really happy with that next finish is twas the night by sue hillis designs so this one was started on the 21st of september and finished on the 15th of december so it took me a total of 18 days and for anyone interested 82 hours of stitching this is stitched on a 32 count opalescent belfast linen and there is the finish there. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. As you can see, the border colours were changed. And I ended up choosing 3821 for the inner border and PB01 for the outer border. And I only did one strand of the PB01 because I didn't want it to be too sparkly. Because if you can see there, the material itself is already sparkly. And I think the one strand is perfect. It just blends in so well. It wasn't framed for Christmas, but that's okay. I, I, I know it was finished for Christmas and it will be up for next year. And I, that was just so lovely to finish. Um, if I had to do anything differently, I probably wouldn't have done all the words first. I, they were the fun part for me. The holly and the leaves were a little bit tedious, a lot of colour changes in there. So my advice to anyone that stitches it, if you're really enjoying the words, don't do all the fun stuff first. Save some fun stuff for last. <laughs> so that was actual that was finish number 45 for the year, that one. But uh, really love that fabric. I've chosen that same fabric for a couple of uh, big designs next year as well. Next one is right behind me. So I'll grab it. And it's December Cottage. And 
and it's all done. This one was finished on the 17th and made into a cube on the 20th. And the colours are so lovely in there. So I uh, found some Merry Christmas fabric I had in my stash, which went perfect. I also had some red and the green was out on sale in Spotlight. And it's that nice ribbon that has its own shape to it. See, it's not soft. And um, if anyone wants to have the ribbon finish like that, I recommend that sort of ribbon because it, it just sits really easily. You can, you know, bend it and stretch it however you want. So might have to go back through some of those old ones up there and um, change out some of these ribbons because I like that a little bit better. So the only changes I made to this were the doorstep, which I've added on all of them, and the eye on the bird. I've actually been looking back on and you know, updating my Pinterest and Facebook, where I keep a record of all these finishes. And I noticed that in the beginning, I didn't stitch the eyes on quite a few of the birds. So never mind, that's the way it goes. So do I have anything else to say about that one? Nope. That was it, nice and easy. Only three more to go, January, February and March. Be the end of my country cottage journey. As far as these cottages go, I'll still be stitching their designs, I love them. Okay, next one I'm going to have to insert a picture because it is a ornament I made for my mum. I decided that why should dad get all the ornaments every year, even though he's passed and they come to me, mum should get them too. So I made mum uh, an ornament this year called Be Merry by Country Cottage Needleworks and I'll insert a picture here. So this is such a cute little design, the little lady on the front. Um, I finished this as a flat ornament with red polka dotted fabric because my mum loves red and she likes polka dots. I also used, I got some inspiration from this one from a blog and I can't remember their name because it's in French but I will write it down below if I remember and she's actually finished the ladies I think it's Country Cottage Needleworks the ladies of the month and she's finished them like this with the little lace trim around uh, you know between the actual design and the fabric of the ornament and I really liked that but I, I didn't have anything quite like what she had so I just used what I had in this, my stash and I think it turned out really well Anyway, um, mum loved it. She doesn't always put up a Christmas tree every year. So um, I said to her, this can hang on your door or hang somewhere. It doesn't have to hang on the tree. And yeah, so she really loved that. And the fact that I made it um, was even more special for her. And that was my f first flat ornament. So three three FFOs this month, which was first, first flat fold, first flat ornament and first felt ornament. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to doing some more of those next year. Not as scary as they look, especially if you follow um, Vonnie's tutorials. And since Christmas, um, I haven't actually done any stitching for about four nights since Christmas Eve. I just didn't really feel like doing any stitching, which is unlike me. But um, I decided the other night that I really needed to stitch something. I needed something colourful, needed something cheery. Um, so one particular thing that I bought this past month jumped out at me and said, yes, this is what you need to do. So I started last night on Sue Hillis Designs Post Stitches and it's called Names of the Seven Menopausal Dwarfs. I'm sure some of you have already seen this design before. And it's a really nice quick stitch. So as I said, last night I started it and I need something to put behind there. And I got that much done. Love the colours and it certainly did cheer me up. It was a nice design to stitch. So I hope to actually get that finished tonight. So when I give you my tallies in a moment, it will be including this one being finished because it will be finished before the end of the year, most certainly. Okay, so 
We're up to the part where I'm going to talk about my earring review, just quickly. I don't want this video to have to go on too long for you all. Uh, I was doing a tally earlier of how many finishes I have for the year, how many FFOs, and exactly what FFOs I had done. So I like looking at um, you know things broken down. So hopefully you'll bear with me and, and enjoy listening to this as well. Okay, so my total finishes for 2015, including finishing the Dwarfs one that I started last night, is 48 cross stitches. So 48 cross stitch finishes plus 23 of the pin broidery cards. And I'm going to count them as finishes because even though they're not cross stitching, they are still stitching. So there's no real difference other, you know, like if you're going to compare black work and hard anger and, and all that sort of stuff, it's still stitching. So total of 71 finishes for the year. I originally wrote down at the beginning of the year what I had hoped to achieve and I came up with a really stupid figure, I thought at the time, of around 40 finishes. And when I looked at it, I thought there's just no way that's not going to happen. I'll probably be lucky to get 20. Never thought I would end up with 71. Um, obviously there are a lot of cards in there, but there are also some really big finishes. Uh, there are six designs that I class as medium to large. There's my Mirabilia Mermaid of Atlantis. There's the Blackwork Journey Saver Stitches, Lavender and Lace Celtic Autumn, 99 Bottles, my Giraffes, and uh, Twas the Night. So we're not talking all 71 little things. So it is a really huge achievement and um, I really don't know how I got all those finishes done. I, I put it down to the rotation. That really can be the only thing because I've never done rotations before and it really worked for me. And I've noticed a lot of you out there have been doing rotations and I hope you're still happy with them. I hope you Finding it changes things up a bit and, and stops the boredom because um, that's what's kept me stitching every night and, and not getting bored with my projects. Um, aside from the finishes, which is really awesome, um, it's the FFOs, the fully finished objects that shocked me the most and it's the number that I'm the most proud of because I'm someone that usually stitches and rolls it up and puts it away. This year changed everything. So before I give you the total amount of FFOs, I'm going to tell you exactly what I um, made. And um, that will also include two things that were made from previous years but were finished this year. So anyway, um, I made one cushion, two wall hangings. One of those was from last year, which was the Magical Creatures wall hanging one flat fold, two ornaments, three biscornus or pincushions, so it's actually um, two biscornus in there and one pincushion, six designs were framed, one of those was Blue Dragon which was completed last year, ten no sew cubes which um, this is eight up there, nine count <laughs> nine up there and Gilligan's Island so that's ten and there's still a couple more of those to go for next year um, 17 cross stitch cards which is freakishly amazing um, I think there was about eight or nine of those were Christmas cards but the others were made throughout the year for stitching friends and and family members 23 pin broidery cards which is amazing, but they're loads of fun. And out of all the things that I stitched this year, only eight things weren't finished off. So haven't been framed or put in a cube or anything. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy that that figure's low, but I want to get those done next year. So now that that said, the total FFOs for 2015, including the pin broidery cards, 65. 65 items that were fully finished. And that's incredible for someone that 
didn't normally finish things fully. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm proud that I, I'm, I'm someone that likes to see things through from start to finish. And it's not just about stitching it anymore. It's about getting it out there and enjoying it. And now I know it doesn't just have to go in a frame. It can be put in a cube. It can be turned into an ornament. It can be put on a box. It can be made into a pincushion. There's just so many ways of doing it now. And I have a whole new wave of creativity flowing through me and thinking about ways I can finish things. So I hope to improve on that next year. I hope to not only finish fully finish the other eight items that I stitched this year but also start doing the ones that have been sitting in my cupboard from previous years because they don't deserve to be there they should be up on the wall and be enjoyed so having said that let's go talk about 2016 I am going to be participating in four stitch alongs. Four. I have never done four at a time. I'm very excited. I had to buy myself a new project planner so I can keep track of what I have to stitch when and remembering to put it on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. January 1st, let me tell you, is going to be a busy day because I have to stitch on four things. Four things. And then the, because one of them's not part of the sow, but the other sow is on the second. All right, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So some of these things are stash that I have bought, but you'll understand that. We'll talk about the stash later. So stitch along number one is Santa's Village and I'm stitching that with Santa's Village Sal <laughs> which is a Facebook group and it's Country Cottage Needleworks and it's Little Cottages of course I'm going to be participating in that um, so I've got everything ready I've been spending this last week as well kitting up all my projects everything's organized I think I just have to decide on um, a fourth whip and I haven't decided on that yet at the moment we've got even though I'm fourth I'll get there in a minute getting ahead of myself my brain often thinks before my mouth talks so I am stitching my Santa's Village on a 32 count opalescent Belfast linen because it's beautiful and it's sparkly and it's just it's going to show up these colors so well um, you guys have all seen these right I'll go through them really quick and they're not in order anymore so I'm sorry about that reindeer stables Santa's stocking store Mrs. Claus's cookie shop North Pole post office Poinsettia place Santa's house, this is number one. I was taking photos today, so they're messed up. Hot Cocoa Cafe. Elves Workshop. Gingerbread Emporium. Santa's Sleigh Works. Candy Cane Cottage. And Christmas Tree Farm. Aren't they gorgeous little cottages? So I had to buy all the hand dyes. I wasn't going to. I was going to do it in DMC. But there's a lot of people in this stitch along. And I thought, you know what? This is a special one. This is Christmas. Christmas deserves to be in special colours. So I'm not going to go through them all. But they are beautiful. But I must say, a couple of these have different names but the colors look identical so I don't know if they just changed the names like Turkish red and Louisiana hot sauce tell me what the difference is there 
because I can't see it. And there's another two. Um, there were two browns. I can't remember which ones they were now, but oh well. I'm sure it will work. And then I had to make the decision, do I do the buttons or don't I do the buttons? I don't know. Uh, again, I decided it's Christmas. Of course I have to do the buttons. So there's 12 packs of absolutely gorgeous little buttons. And um, they are so cute. So I think it's just going to add that extra dimension. I haven't decided how I'm going to finish it. It will possibly be a wall hanging. But I don't know. I'll probably change my mind once it's all finished and see it as something else. I don't know. So that is going to be stitch along number one, starting 1st of January. Let's move that out of the way. And when I say stitch along number one, I mean stitch along 1A. Then we move to stitch along 1B. And this one is a stitch along with the Facebook group Stitch Mania. And it's for the Brooks Books Year Long Sale. So you have to stitch one character or ornament or whatever from Brooks Books per month for the year. So you have to make it last the year. Now I'd already shown these in a previous video, but I'm doing the Wizard of Oz set. I will go through them very quickly for those of you that might have missed out. We have the lion and these are in no particular order. Tin Man, Scarecrow, Dorothy, Glinda the Good, and the Flying Monkey. The Wicked Witch of the West, The Great and Powerful Oz, Mr. Gilligan, Miss Quadling, Mrs. Winky, and Mayor Munchkin. Now, with the help of the wonderful Garrett from Stitch Mania, He's helped me decide how I'm going to stitch these because to stitch them in one piece of fabric because I want them lengthways is going to be a massive piece of fabric. So he helped me break them up into groups because I've, I've told you before I haven't read the book. I've only watched the movie and I was unaware of the fact that there's the north, east, west and south in the Emerald City and um, Garrett told me exactly what colours each area was. I wrote it all down, Garrett. I have it all, so thank you. I have that forever. So how I'm going to tackle this is I'm going to stitch, and this, I'm doing to, going to do it in three groups. Three groups of four, and then that's how they will be probably framed. Maybe cubed, but probably framed. I think framing Wizard of Oz needs something special. Okay, so the first group of three that I'm starting on January the 1st will be Dorothy, Scarecrow, Tin Man, Lion. Otherwise known as the Friends. The next group of four will be Wizard of Oz, The Wicked Witch, Flying Monkey and Glinda. So... January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Last four, Mia Munchkin, uh, what's her name? Miss Win Mrs. Winky, Miss Quadling, and Mr. Gillikin. Um, so what did I say? August, September, October, November, December. So that's my year. One a month for a year. I'm going to be stitching these also on 32 count opalescent linen. I bought the recommended fabric, but again, needs sparkle. It doesn't look like it on the hair, but all of these designs have metallics. 
So they all have some bling. And the metallics are the DMC Light Effects that I don't like. Sorry, don't like them. Don't like them. So what did I do? I used my handy dandy Petite Treasure Braid colour card. I went down to Spotlight because I didn't have the beautiful colour card that Teresa had sent me yet. Went down to Spotlight and I colour matched the light effects to my Petite Treasure Braid and I ordered the check out those aren't they gorgeous so I got these from eBay from Sam Daggett who I'll write down below awesome service um, Canadian seller so the Aussie dollar conversion is fantastic so much better than the US there's a good tip for anyone Aussies um, buy Canadian if you can Canadian dollars um, only problem is he didn't have two of the dark green so I have to get one of those from somewhere else to be honest I don't know how many of each colour I needed I just looked at the fact of I went through all the charts and saw who had what colour and how much was stitched in that one, one colour so one colour might be enough but just in case just err on the side of caution I wanted two so um, there was one colour didn't convert one color that was nothing close to or not according to my color chart was the e317 which I think is titanium so I still have to stitch with one one light effects and that's on tin man but I'm sure I can make do I'm sure one won't kill me so that's that my floss box is all ready to go with my DMC colors and Garrett asked me which of the four friends I was going to stitch first. I don't know. Um, if I do it in that order, I will probably stitch Dorothy first. If I swap them around, should I swap them around? I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I keep Dorothy where she is? I want to keep the height ratio looking good. I think it looks pretty good like that. Tall, short, tall, short. We'll see. We'll see. So 1st of January. Um, I called this one B because the cottage, uh, the Santa's Village appears to have more stitching than these do. So on week one, my week one whip will be concentrating on Santa's Village. If I have any spare time left at the end of the week, that's when I will be doing my Wizard of Oz. If there is no spare time, I'll have to wait towards the end of the month. But I will get one character finished per month. That way, There won't be any issue with that at all. Um, somewhere in between all these sales, I will still need to do my January cottage of the month. So I'll probably need to try and squeeze in an hour a day in the afternoon like I used to. That dwindled off towards the end of last year. I just didn't get a lot of time for that. Probably because of all the extra cards I was making. Um, so I need to find some time to get January done. As I said, there's only three more of those. And I'm looking forward to the end of them. I, I still love stitching them. But it is going to be nice to be doing something with a different theme to it. So um, stitch along number two which is Whip 2, is also a Stitch Mania. And this is called New Year, New Start. And I'm doing Mirabilia Roses of Provence, which is the one that my mum chose. I said, pick a Mirabilia and I'll stitch it for you. And I'm so glad she chose this because this was one of my favourites. And I think it became even more of a favourite after I saw Teresa Little Stitcher stitching it. It's just something about YouTube and seeing things come to life that make us love it more, isn't there? That's why our wish lists keep growing. Mine needs to stop. My bank balance just can't handle it anymore. Um, so this will be stitched on 32 count Sprite Lugana, which is by Picture This Plus. 
and it is a very soft lavender. It's almost like a mottled tie-dye effect which you really doesn't show on the camera so I don't know how it's going to show up on Instagram. I, I hope it does but sometimes I know my safer stitches gave me so much grief last year trying to get the colors to show up right um, so yes this will be started on January 1st as well everything is kitted and ready to go um, I can't show you the box because my camera is leaning on it so after all that I've just shown you four projects but only two of them are whips <laughs> Somehow all that has to squeeze into two weeks. Um, whip number three is carry on from last year, but this will be with a new stitch along, a new stitch along group. And this is with Cross Stitch, it's fun, and it's the Heaven and Earth Design Sale. And their challenge is to stitch 100 stitches per week. So I will be stitching this as my normal week three whip but also adding in, I might do it on a Sunday or something. Um, I haven't factored that into my diary yet, but I will. So that will be my mini bath time. And just for the record, this is where my progress is. And this will be my starting point on January the 2nd, which is when this one starts, January the 2nd. So there she is. I'm really looking forward to getting back to her. It feels like it feels like a year since I've stitched on her. It hasn't been quite that long, but so many things have gotten in the way and I've used the excuse that, well, she's nowhere near finished, so she won't mind waiting a few months. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Because if I keep using that excuse, she'll never get finished. So that is that one. I don't have a whip for. At the moment I'm leaving it open because I need to see that I can get the Santa's Village and the Wizard of Oz done in the, in a week. Um, I have loads of other things that I want to put into that whip for and it's just coming down to choosing one. <laughs> um, I may even put up a, a vote or something on, on Instagram. I may put up a few pictures and say please help me choose my next whip. So look out for that if you're on Instagram. Um, next year I also as well as all this stuff I've got a lot of tutorials planned a lot of people have asked for this that and the other and I really want to get them all done I really like helping you guys it means the world to me that you do ask me for help I, I'm no one special but I, I like the fact that I can help you if I can I, I don't, I'm just that sort of person anyway um What else do I have to show you? In case I forget, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a quick video montage. I'm not going to do it as a separate video because I want to get it up before the end of the year. And I spend way too much time on my editing. It's just crazy. So I'll just do a quick video montage right at the end, just showing you quickly all the things that I finished during the year, all the pin broidery cards. So you can see that the 70, what was it? 71 finishes were all true and correct. I haven't made that number up. Um, stash. I haven't showed you the stash yet. Now these are things that obviously I wanted, otherwise I wouldn't have bought them, but I really want to somehow slot these in during the year. This is what Whip 4 is going to be all about. The Wizard of Oz and Santa's Village will both be year-long sales. So week one is written off for the entire year. Um, whip two, the Mirabilia, that won't take a year. And when that's finished, I will be bringing in a lavender and lace. Still have not decided which one. It might be Christmas, and I might be stitching that with Claire, Pyrex Stitches, but we've yet to decide on that. And whip three is... My heaven and earth design that's going to be another year more than likely so that only leaves whip four and the last week of the month and i hope to do a whole heap i'm not focusing on 
lots and lots of finishes that's not me this year for some reason it, it just happened that way um, I really enjoyed all the little finishes I did this year I can't see that happening next year because of so many I've got so many big things I want to get done so I'll show you my last bit of stash for the year um, I hope I'm not going to say that it is because whenever I say that then I go and buy something else I hope this is going to be the last spend for a while because I have I have all the stuff that I want I have all I keep buying this stuff saying I really love that design I want to stitch it and then I keep buying more stuff so I have to stop doing it okay let me show you what I bought um, from 123 stitch I bought at our house Lizzie Kate I was going through my wish list and this has been on there very long time I'll read it quickly so that you don't have to put your glasses on if you wear glasses um, at our house we do real we do mistakes we do I'm sorry we do do-overs we do fun we do forgiveness we do loud really well we do hugs we do patience we do family we do love love it this is $25 but it comes with the thread and I think this is such good value I mean yeah you have to buy your fabric but you don't need a big piece it's only um, it doesn't give the finished size it's 79 stitches wide by 208 high so it comes with some white thread but it comes with classic color works and you get two four six seven full skines not not little pieces full skines and you wouldn't need all of them so you have lots left over look at those colors look at that one that's really tealy that's the color $25 I reckon that's excellent value so that quickly jumped into the basket so, yeah no more digressing on that one you have to have that Carolyn because that I like quotes really really like quotes and um, especially positive ones and um, be nice to have that up in the house excuse me for rattling to try and clean up as I go otherwise it takes me a long time okay next thing I bought from 123 stitch is another Lizzie Kate and this is called do small things with great love again I love quotes and this one is me do small things with great love I do everything with great love um, I bought some fabric they um, have some clearance fabrics out from time to time and I bought this I didn't realize the tag was only on one of them okay it's 28 count Lugana and the color is dark cobblestone and you really can't see it very well if I put it up against there you can sort of see so it's darker than mushroom where's my mushroom yeah there's mushroom can you see there it's a really nice color and if you didn't notice already that's what I'm doing this one on so the colors pop really well so this is going to be another favorite Lagana fabric I'm sure especially if there's a lot of things with skin color which might tend to blend into the mushroom a little bit it's this darker color they won't so I bought two pieces of that they're only like five dollars a piece which was fantastic and I bought a piece of Ada because I really liked the color and it's called Riviera Aqua and it's 16 count Ada how nice is that that was only about five dollars I think 12 by 18 piece so it might be something maybe one of my snowman designs nice color for that that one I also bought from 123 stitch a roll of diamond red to match with my silver and gold um, possibly for Christmas cards next year I don't mind this thread I actually prefer it to Krennic because it's stronger and by what I mean I mean by that is it still splits at the end but I find with Krennic after you've gone up through your fabric a few times it can tend to split in between the thread if you, if you can understand what I'm saying 
um, the thread sort of like unravels between where your stitching is and where the needle is and it just starts looking horrible and that tends to happen from using too long a piece of thread. This stuff from what I've done with it so far it doesn't seem to do that it just it looks much stronger it's more wire like and as I said it still frays at the end but um, I look forward to giving this a little bit more of a try next year. I still love my Petite Treasure braid and that will be number one for me, for metallics, always. But uh, yeah, this, will, this might come in handy. It's, it's not very expensive. Okay, this one I'm really excited about. Now, I didn't know I wanted this until I saw it on eBay. And eBay is really dangerous for that. Has anyone else come across that? But you, you know, you're quite happy with what you've got. Then you go on eBay and you see something and then you say, oh, I have to have that. And then, of course, you must win that auction because you can't live your life without it. So I, I lost this auction because I wasn't sure of the value. I only saw it last minute and I, I needed to work out how much it was going to cost and I didn't know if the auction was too highly priced or not. In the end, I missed out on a bargain. But it doesn't matter. Uh, this is Little House Needleworks. Song of the Seasons and this was a mystery sampler and there's three parts and I know Melanie Watkins has this one. I don't know if she's, I don't, have you finished it Melanie? I'm not sure. Hello by the way. Um, why does this one appeal to me? If you haven't seen it, there is the finish. So it's got a house on each side, a tree in the middle. It says spring, summer, fall and winter and then it has the alphabet. I love it. I just love it. So I had to buy the Weeks Dye Works to go with that. Again, I mentioned on my last video that there was a lady on eBay selling Weeks cheap in Australia. Um, so I got some of that from her. But there's the colours. And this is, I'm a little bit nervous about this, but I'm excited. This is going to be a big first for me for next year. I'm stitching this on 40 count fabric. I've never stitched 40 count. I've never stitched above 32. But I will tell you, this is the colour here. This is flax. And the reason why, there's two reasons why I want to stitch on 40 count is this French blog that I mentioned earlier that I've been following she stitches a lot of things on 40 count and she said it's her preferred material you only need one strand of thread one strand over two threads so imagine how much further the hand dyed threads will go you only need one strand and you don't have to worry about railroading your stitches because with one strand it's always going to lay flat that excites me. So if my eyes can handle it and I enjoy it, I'm going to do more. But I have to laugh and say that Melanie showed in her video her 40 count earlier in the year. And I was a bit shocked. I was like, how on earth do you see 40 count? And I was a bit jealous and I, was, I couldn't possibly do that. But now that this has arrived and I've looked at it, I can see the holes. It's not too bad. And yet some 32 count fabric I have, the holes are really hard to see. So I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully it will work and hopefully there will be many more things because I like the over dyed threads. I don't like having to buy them. But if I can use one strand, just think of how much more I can do with them. So this one will hopefully be done at some stage in 2016. Then I also got Afternoon in Paris because I showed the other one which was Afternoon in New York and I decided to get this one. So I'll stitch this up at some stage because that's lovely. I really like those. And um, Sorry, I, didn't, I said New York. It's London is the other one I have. New York is coming. 
That's the whole reason I decided that I was going to purchase this series. I liked Paris. London came out, I got excited, and then I read there was going to be New York. Well, I, I literally jumped off the chair and said, yes, I must do that. I love New York. So, see, it's a, it's a series. I have to finish the series. Then on eBay, um, this lady was the same lady that was selling the um, Weeks Dye Works I mentioned before. So she had a couple of charts for sale, and I had to jump at them because this... Uh, you know by now I collect Country Cottage Needleworks charts, right? I have quite a stash of them. This is number one. Number, look, number one. If you're going to collect something, you have to have the first one. Bakery. Now, my beautiful niece, who gave me the pot holders for Christmas, she's like me. She's a Libran. And like me, she loves to bake cakes and she makes the most amazing cakes. I think this one will be for her. I think she will love it. And I also bought number three. I was upset there wasn't a number two. But then I've looked on the Country Cottage Needleworks page and number two isn't the same thing anyway. It's a completely different thing. So this is number three and this is called The Flower Shop. And I like that as well. Oh, Country Cottage Needleworks, I don't think I'm going to stop until I have all of your charts. And then I'll be starting on Little House Needleworks. But I prefer Country Cottage, number one. And then I bought Lizzie Kate Dog Lovers, which comes with two different designs. So you've got the design at the top, Welcome, Sit, Stay. It's cute. And then I Love My Dog. Sorry about the glare. Cute. Love Lizzie Kate as well. Now this one, and a few of you, I suspect, are going to be after this one when you see this. And I'm sorry if you have trouble finding it because it's old. It is 1995. I got it on eBay. It's in perfect condition. Um, I really don't like showing things that I know people are going to want and are hard to find. It makes me feel guilty because I, I want to help people, but we can't photocopy charts and send them and it's wrong. Um, so fingers crossed, those of you that really want it can get a copy of it. This is called Cross Stitch Crazy and it's designed by Linda Coleman. And there's two, there's three charts on here, but there's two that I went nuts for. This is it here. I'll show you this one first. Cross stitch forever, housework whenever. I think most of us have heard of this saying. I've seen it mentioned hundreds of times. It's true, although we do have to do housework, sadly. It's lovely. I really like that one. But the main one that I had to have this chart for was this one. Cross stitch crazy, certified, official member, support group, one at, call 1-800-STITCH-FIX. So how many people need this in their life? Cross-stitch crazy certified. Yep. Quite a few of you just put your hand up. I saw you. It's a great design. A nice quick one that will be done next year. Keep me to that, okay? Then I also purchased, um, to, which completes my series, the seasonal celebrations, again, from Country Cottage Needleworks, autumn, because I already have spring and summer, so now I have autumn, and I had to buy the hand-dyed threads that go with that, and winter. So now I have all four. I wanted all four before I started stitching them, because I want to stitch all four on the same colour fabric. And I think I've chosen 32 count ivory linen, so we'll see. Um, there's the hand dyed threads and the DMC that I didn't have for that one. And buttons. So cute little buttons. So that's another series that is being planned. And the last one is a biggie. This one has probably been on my wish list since 
for one, two, three stitch from the very beginning. Um, I'm not, I really can't remember where I saw it. I think I saw it on one, two, three stitch first, and then I have seen some YouTubers show it. But what got me really excited about it was a particular picture that I saw on the internet of this design. I'll show you what it is. This is Little House Needleworks. And few of you are going to go, I've seen that. I've got that. This is awesome. You know I'm positive. You know I love quotes. This is me. This is so me. Um, this is the Little Sheep Virtues. So in case you haven't seen them, I'm going to show them. Hope. Love. Peace. Courage. Faith. Simplicity. Patience. Wisdom. Friendship. Kindness. Gratitude. And joyfulness. These are all things I needed these in my life. Daily reminders of everything I live up to. I'm not going to be finishing these as pillows. Am I mistaken or is Miss Mel stitching these? I think Miss Mel is. Pretty sure. Um, I'm not going to finish them as pillows. I do adore them as pillows. I may do one day because this looks like something that would be very simple and easy to stitch again. So I'm not going to say I'm never going to. I am, however, going to stitch them as one complete piece and in the middle is a country cottage needleworks design called Sheep in the Meadow. So this goes in the middle and the others get arranged around it. And it is such a gorgeous finished piece that someone designed, well, they decided to do it that way and I loved it. They changed some of the colours. I think they swapped out the purple for blue um, and they made it unique so I'll be looking for a way to do that as well but I love that so now that I have that that was quite an expense buying that but now that I have that that is high on the priority list um, so I look forward to that one um, only one other thing to mention is a lot of you took some interest in my project cards for last year. I have updated them for this year to now include all the things that I include when I post my finishes on Instagram. So all the things that I usually get lots of comments and questions regarding, um, all the answers are there under my Instagram feed. So on my new project cards, I have front and back, I have design, designer, source, as in what magazine it was in or what online shop I bought it from, started and finished dates, finished object date, finished, fully finished object date, and what it was finished as, um, days and time, if applicable. I don't, I don't um, measure the time or days with the smaller stitches, only with the big projects. The stitch count, finished size, fabric, Notions, and that's threads, so DMC, Weeks, Dye Works, um, Gentle Arts, Gentle Arts, Sampler Threads, etc, etc. Um, also includes mill, mill, oh, mill Hill Beads and such. Um, the Stitch, so 2 over 1, 2 over 2, French Knots, Specialty Stitches, all that sort of stuff. On the back I have a section for any changes that I've made, which is always handy to note. Below that is notes, so I can put things like my first ever flat fold or my first Lizzie Kate design. It's nice to look back on those and rem remember what was your first. And then at the bottom, sow. So just to remind me 
who the stitch along is with, which group it is, and if there's any special notes to remember. So that's the end of another video for the year. Um, I've lost count of how many, 50 something, which is crazy. Um, I would like to wish you all a very happy new year. I hope that 2016 brings you much joy and happiness, hundreds of fully finished objects, if not at least some finishes that you are proud of. Um, but most importantly, that you have time to enjoy the things that you enjoy doing because that's what it's all about. It's, it's great to work hard, it's great to earn money, do all those sorts of things, but we really need to sit down and take time out for ourselves and watch our health. And we do that by doing what we love to do. So I am going to end that here. I would like to thank you all for your support throughout 2015, for your encouraging words, for your kind comments, um, just all the wonderful things that everyone has to say in this community in helping inspire one another um i wouldn't be here without any of you and i i thank you all so on that note be kind to one another and i will see you again next year bye